There are many reasons why dogs are man's best friend and why I personally love them so much. But one of the biggest is that they come in so many diverse forms known as breeds. Some are big, others are small. Some have soft fur, others have coarse fur. Some have pointy ears, others have floppy ears. Some are great for service work, others are better off just being fur babies. Because dogs are just as versatile as humans are, every dog lover has a different breed or set of breeds that's to their liking. Although I myself don't have a dog, I'm no exception. I've met many types of dogs from petting them at a friend or relative's house to just looking at people walking them out the window. While I love all dogs, there are 10 types in particular that I'm pretty partial towards for a variety of reasons. Before I start ranking them, I want to give a warm welcome to anyone who's new to my channel. Here at From Laura's Perspective, I post a new video at least once a week on the many facets of the complex world and culture we live in. No matter what your interests, I have at least one category of videos that will capture your attention. So if you choose not to subscribe to my channel, you're depriving yourself of an amazing experience. But enough about that. Let's get started. Starting off with our number 10 spot, we've got the Poodle. This breed is best known for being mixed with hybrid breeds such as Golden Retrievers, Labradors, Maltese, and Bernice Mountain Dogs to reduce shedding. But plain old, old Poodles are pretty neat as well. Oftentimes in animated media, anthropomorphic Poodle characters tend to have very snooty personalities. This is ironic, given that poodles are actually one of the lower maintenance subsets among canines. You wouldn't think when looking at them, but their curly fur coats are actually pretty easy to bathe and groom. Poodles come in many different sizes, but the tiniest of them all is the toy poodle. If you've ever actually pet a poodle, you know that a poodle's fur is much softer and fluffier than it looks. In second to last place on this list is the Chihuahua. The thing about Chihuahuas is that their size can actually be quite deceiving to onlookers. They may look cute, tiny, and cuddly, but they yap and bite. Forget the pit bull or the Doberman Pinscher. Don't worry, that's only if you pick a fight with a Chihuahua. It's in this breed's fiery, spicy personality that its Mexican origins are reflected. There's even a song by the Golden Orchestra about this breed called Chihuahua Cha Cha Cha, which has become very popular in Chihuahua TikToks. My favorite Chihuahua of all time is actually TikTok's famous Lou the Chi Chi and her little sister Nala. Number eight is the Weimaraner. What I love most about the Weimaraner is that my Aunt Karen's dog Amber is a Weimaraner. Throughout this video, you'll find that I'm pretty partial towards the kinds of dogs my family members have, and this one's just the beginning. When I first met Amber, I thought she was a greyhound, just as anyone who didn't know the difference would. Weimaraners have gray fur, just like greyhounds, but Weimaraners have floppy ears and greyhounds have pointy ears. Their name comes from the Grand Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach, Karl August, whose court, located in the city of Weimar, which is now the state of Thuringia in modern day Germany, enjoyed hunting. The Weimaraner is an all-purpose gun dog and possesses traits such as speed, stamina, high olfactory sense, great eyesight, courage, and intelligence. Weimaraners are sometimes referred to as the gray ghost of the canine species because of their ghostly coat and eye color. Number seven is the cute, tiny little Papillon. An alias for Papillons is the Continental Toy Spaniel. This name is quite fitting since Papillons are in the Spaniel category and they're very tiny, which is what the name toy always refers to in a dog breed. 
At four paws for ability, the facility I spent some time at in college, most of the service dogs they trained were Labs and Goldens, both of which appear somewhere on this list. But some of their dogs were Papillons. People often wonder what such tiny dogs can do for someone with a disability. During my time at Four Paws, I learned that Papillons actually make really good seizure alert dogs, are really good at smelling high or low blood sugars, and have really soft fur to comfort people with mental health issues. Even Papillons who aren't trained to be service dogs are very intelligent, self-assured, easy to train, and get along with humans of all ages. And of course, they're very cute, even when that doesn't count. Number six is the Cocker Spaniel. Did you know that the former of the two title characters in Lady and the Tramp is a Cocker Spaniel? With Lady being such a high-class, purebred Cocker Spaniel, you'd never know that the name Cocker comes from the fact that American and English Cocker Spaniels alike were originally bred for their ability to hunt woodcocks. At one point, this purpose shifted to being bred as gun dogs, meaning they would use their sense of smell to cover low areas near their owner to flush birds into the air to be shot and to use their eyes and nose to locate the bird once down and then retrieve the bird with a soft mouth. The main difference between the English and American varieties is that the American is smaller with a shorter back, a domed head, and a shorter muzzle, while the English variety is taller with a narrower head and chest. One of the best things about Cocker Spaniels is that their fur coats come in a variety of colors, including black, liver, red, and golden in solids. Number five is a relative of the Cocker Spaniel, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Another member of the Spaniel family. Not only are Cavalier King Charles Spaniels cute, they're also very majestic, classy, and have soft fur. And with all of that, you never know of their hunting abilities. Remember how I said earlier that toy poodles are the much smaller version of plain old poodles? Well, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels are toy spaniels, meaning they're some of the runts of the spaniel family, along with Papillons. In fact, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is actually the bigger version of the plain old King Charles Spaniel. Cavalier Kings are set apart from other Spaniels, not just by their small size, but their much silkier, smoother coats. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and the English Toy Spaniel can often be confused with each other since they look so much alike. In the United Kingdom, the English Toy Spaniel is called the King Charles Spaniel, while in the United States, one of the colors of the Toy Spaniel is known as King Charles. The two breeds share similar history and only diverged from each other about a hundred years ago. Number four is the Big Cuddly Golden Retriever. The Golden Retriever is one of my mom's favorites for the same reason it's anyone else's favorite, because Goldens are so cuddly and affectionate. Granted, the cuddles and affection of a Golden can sometimes be a bit much, and they get a little overexcited when they see their owner or other favorite person running around like crazy, behaving like a lap dog, and licking people who might not want to be licked. When I say all these things, I'm mostly referring to my Uncle David and Aunt Beth's Golden, Murphy. Because of the Golden's affectionate and comforting nature, along with their intelligence and trainability, Goldens make great service dogs and therapy dogs, especially pe for people who need assistance in the form of pressure or cuddle therapy. In fact, Murphy is a trained therapy dog himself. One of the drawbacks of having a golden is they shed a lot. So if anyone in your house is allergic to dogs, a golden isn't the way to go. But if you want to have a dog with a golden's loving personality but doesn't shed as much, try crossbreeding it with the poodle. Number three is a classic, the Labrador Retriever. 
It's a pretty basic, common breed, but you gotta love them anyway. If anything, there's a reason more dog owners opt for a Labrador Retriever than for most other breeds. They make good service dogs because they're big, strong, and intelligent. In fact, service dog training facilities tend to make heavy use of labs. In fact, one of the most famous Labradors of all, Endel, was trained to put his wheelchair-bound owner in the recovery position, cover him with the blanket, and activate an emergency phone. Even when labs don't become service dogs, they're a lot easier to train than other breeds because of their elevated intelligence. Maybe that's why so many families opt for a lab when picking out a dog for their household. The breed is named for the Canadian province of the same name, but they were actually originally bred in the United Kingdom. Labradors can have either a yellow, black, or brown fur coat, and all three of these colors can and often do appear in the same litter. Our runner-up is the Beagle. I'm pretty partial towards this breed as the dog that got me over my childhood fear of dogs and made me feel a stronger affection towards the species was a beagle. I met this beagle, Odie, when my Annalisa adopted him in 2017. I'm always so excited whenever I get to see Odie because of his beagle features such as orange and black splotches on his fur coat, guy liner around his eyes, and soft, smooth ears that hang down from his sides. Perhaps the most famous beagle of all is Charlie Brown's beagle, Snoopy. Snoopy is always sniffing around, and his primary concern is whether or not he'll have enough to eat, which are typical traits of real-life beagles. Beagles have a pretty big appetite, and they will pester you if they're hungry and not being fed. Though all dogs have a heightened sense of smell, a beagle's is probably the strongest of them all. Their name actually comes from the act of beagling, the technical term for hunting rabbits, which beagles are bred to do. Before we find out which breed won, let's give a shout out to a few breeds that were also seriously considered for this list. There's the Tibetan Spaniel, the Pekingese, and the Rough Collie. And now I hereby grant the gold medal of dog breeds to the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Just like with entry number nine, I mostly fell in love with this breed while following a TikTok platform centered around Pembroke Welsh Corgis. Specifically, I fell in love with them through the TikTok and YouTube platforms of Hammy and Olivia, the corgis, their owners, Chris Equal, makes talk and go on various adventures. Equal has actually published a book called Bark Cuterie, a cookbook full of recipes that dogs can eat so that they can join in with their humans on their parties. Before I even knew about Hammy and Olivia, my dad and stepmom got a corgi named Opie. But Opie's an American Corgi, meaning he's a cross between a Pembroke Welsh Corgi and a Cardigan Welsh Corgi. The latter is differentiated from the former by a longer tail and heavier bones. The number one association with Corgis today is that the recently deceased Queen Elizabeth II bred and owned many Corgis ever since her father, King George VI, brought home their first royal corgi, who was later named Dookie. Since then, the queen had a literal total of 30 corgis throughout her recently ended lifetime. Thank you all so much for watching. Given that you clicked on this video, I'm sure you're a dog lover. Even if you don't have a dog, guess what? You don't have to have a dog of your own to be a dog lover. I don't, and dogs are one of my favorite things in the world. Here at From Laura's Perspective, I talk a lot about a lot of my favorite things in the world, which you'll find from watching my videos are quite versatile. But don't just take my word for it. 
If you liked what you saw today, see even more of what I have to offer by clicking some of the links on your screen or seeing what else I have on my channel page. Given how versatile my content is, you're sure to find something that interests you, no matter who you are. So if you have no excuse not to check it out and subscribe.